Welcome back to Razmafsar TV. I am really happy to have here Mike and Jim. They are going to show us techniques of uh, sword and buckler, of Georgian sword and buckler. And uh, how are you, gentlemen? Everything fine? Everything okay? It's good. We, we have a beautiful day for it here. Yeah, I see that. It's beautiful. <laughs> very nice, very nice. Okay, then uh, please let me know what are you going to show us today? So we, uh, we thought we would start um, just with the basics of the joined guards, which is sort of the core of the system, and then work our way sort of out from there into some of the other guard positions and the techniques from them. Uh, maybe talk a little bit about power generation um, and talk a little bit about how uh, the Kevs are trained. Perfect. Uh, to... All right. So shall we uh, just begin or? Yes, please. Go ahead. Yes. All right. Let's make sure we're in view here. Um, we should probably grab masks. <laughs> just because I don't want to brain him or get brained. Yeah. Um, so uh, let me talk a little bit. There's a series of joined guards in the Kepser system, um, which begin with the hands together, uh, with my sword hand hidden very much behind the buckler. And I'll shift from here, 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 right, working our way around in the different positions on the buckler. Um, and that's coupled with a very square, slightly squatted position, as if I was doing uh, back squats in the gym. And from here, the core of the system tends to be very light, accurate chopping blows. Um, and that's your setup, and that's the, the friendly violence, right? So if, uh, you know, in any case, when we have socially mediated, you know, forms of fighting, if Jim and I are showing off, um, we would go ahead and stick to this, where we're not going to thrust, we're not going to hurt each other. You know, there might be a cut, but that's it. So if we go ahead and begin, all right, the core of the system, um, let's flip sideways so ish Yeah, um, you should be able to see us both clearly, all right? We're both in guard, right? And this is the, the alpha, the main guard. And this is where we attack or defend from, typically. So if Jim wants to attack me, he's literally, with hands joined, going to snap forward and cut to my head. All right? So go ahead. All right? That's what he wants to do. Very simple. This is also my main defense position. So again, if he does the same thing and I don't want to get hit, I defend by pressing forward with my hands joined. All right? And from here, I can counter by simply doing the same thing back to him. All right? And we can literally just set up a TikTok if we want, right? Go ahead. All right. This is the core. This is the beginning of everything. Seems simple, very basic. But when we start putting angles in and drawing each other off and playing, right, we're here and we get. All right, so go ahead. You're right, where you're All right. Back and forth, we, we see, and the footwork that goes with it tends to be almost hopping. We're never really hopping, but we don't go in and out a lot. In fact, a lot of the base training, we would literally start, kneel, and set measure, where we can reach each other's mask, and play this without footwork. All right, and here, right, a transition to a shift through. So this ability to strike and rotate through and strike again is really core to the system, the play of the sword and the buckler together. Um, Ellis really tells us that we can literally treat the, the joined weapons like you would treat a long sword in the 15th or 16th century only with the buckler standing in for the strong of the sword, where you make your defenses, where you make your plays. Um, so this is our beginning, right? We're here with this, and I can make these strikes. My basic angles, straight down, angulated, flat. Then my rising cut, I start with my 
my uh, now you can leave the buckle there. I start with my uh, point near my knee, and I'm going to be cutting upwards into his flank. Right from the other side, the same thing: a flat strike and an angled strike. The joined guards and their cuts. Where things get really interesting is our defenses. So we showed initially, right? So if Jim cut to my head and I stopped this way, this part is pretty intuitive. Most people get that. If Jim was to make a descending cut from his right, right, I actually point my sword in the plane of his strike, right? Most people, um, especially sword and buckler people, if we're used to it, um, actually, Jim, you do more single sword than I do. So if you were to cover without the buckler against that same strike, you can see he puts his sword perpendicular to the strike. Yeah. One of the things that's odd about Georgian is that rather than being perpendicular to the strike like that, he's going to defend by place angling his sword along the plane of the strike. Okay, and this happens because, let's actually swap sides here for a second. Um, this happens because if he makes that same strike and I come this way, his sword can slide down and cut to my hands between the sword and the buckler. Yeah. Versus if I'm this way, I've trapped him between my sword and my buckler. The parry is made with the edge of my buckler, which as you can see is you know reinforced with a ring. So the construction of Kevser bucklers is a little different than what you're used to with like the Sephar, right? The parry has these reinforcement rings on the front which is key to the design. That back part might even be hide in older ones um, with the iron rings. So we defend with the rings rather than the face of the buckler, which means that every strike that Jim makes, I'm interposing my ring and using my sword to trap it. From here, we I can easily execute um, what Ellis really refers to as a transfer. Right, and here, what I'm doing is I've got this, and I'm going to literally transfer this to here and make my counter. Right, so here for the first time, we see my hands separate. So, right, we in these plays, as we make this, right, I'm here and I've caught, and this holds true for any of the high blows, right? So if he's coming here, I want to catch between these, or even if you can make the same thing, same from that, from your left, right? Um, I, this is fine too. Here, I might well make my transfer the other way and slide in with this. Um, right, so we have this saying, the sword goes to work, the buckler clears the path. Um, so we very active buckler use. Now here, we're using the buckler in a sense, in a way that would be very familiar to students of 133, right? Where the buckler is covering the sword hand. But it won't always be that way as we start to introduce some of the more complex actions and sequences. Um, but before we get to that, I want to talk about how this plays out in the rising cuts. Because with the rising cuts, it's a bit different, right? So if Jim makes a rising cut to here, I'm not actually going to try and get my blade turned all the way down here and stop this. That's too slow. Yeah. So I will literally parry this here. I align with that angle, but pointed at him. So now I'm in a position where I have the possibility to literally just slide up with a thrust as a counter. Right? And we can see this to either side, right? If Jim cuts from this side, right? I'm here. I've caught it on the edge of my buckler again, and I'm set up for this counter thrust. Kevser and cut, uh, fencing is very cut heavy, but we do make use of the thrust, and we'll talk a bit more about that later, both making it and defending against it. Because as you would guess, right, if we're here and Jim makes a thrust for me, right, how do I parry this with the edge of my buckler? That's not great, right? If I'm really lucky and his point goes down, I can, I can try and jam onto it. It's not, it's not effective. And if there is one thing about Kevser fencing, it's a very pragmatic system. If it doesn't work, they discard it. If it works, they incorporate it. 
Um, to the point where if you're practicing with the right methods and the right tools, pretty much whatever you come up with that fits that would have been considered by the Kevser to be part of their system. Um, so again, we're here. And if Jim goes to make a thrust, for example, right? So actually, yeah, just start a guard we haven't shown yet appears in almost every sword and buckler system, right? The buckler forward, the weapon held back near the hip, right? I think I, I believe, Corasani, I've seen you guys use something very similar with Shamshir and Sephar, with the, the Shamshir back and the Sephar forward. Um, explicitly in the Kepser system, his goal is to hide his sword from me, right? So if I'm doing this facing the camera, let me get where I can get the feedback, right? The goal is you shouldn't be able to see where the sword is at all. Because your sword is straight, Mike. Yes, it's much easier for me it's high to hide. The, the straight sword makes that easier. Um, but in this case, right, we, we're, we're here and it's hidden. So he's going to thrust somewhere. I have no idea where, right? It could be wherever. If he's going to thrust and it comes to my outside, right, my left, high stuff is easy. I just twist and set it aside like I would any blow from that side. If you were to make a, a flat cut from your right, right, I just block it this way. Against the thrust, I do the same thing. And I, I bind down maybe a little less, right? But I'm still set up. We have the same engagement as if I stop the cut. And I can proceed to play as I would against anything. If he comes to the other side, right, which he very well could do, I can do the same thing high. Where it gets fun is if he's going to make a low thrust below my buckler, say, to you know, pick a side, right? Yeah, anywhere, right up the middle, wherever you want to go, right? This is what uh, this is hard to defend this way. And as we go lower and lower, this gets less effective because I have to move my body. Especially on my right side, like trying to come here is a pain. Um, so against a lot of thrusts, we'll actually cover the thrust with a cut, right? And when I'm here and I've got this, now I'm in a good place. He's bound up, I have options. And traditionally, if I've covered on this side, I'm just gonna come in and strike with my buckle. Um, but I don't have to, I have options. Coming from this, let's see, we've covered these base and defenses on them. Almost universally, our defenses will begin from one of the joined guards. Um, much akin to a suburb taking a modern suburb taking third, like habitually as their starting point. Um, most cats are, this is our starting point. If we move to somewhere else, there's a reason for it. Um, so playing with that, there are also places where we're going to support the sword with the buckler, but in a more complex manner, where the, the buckler isn't simply covering the sword hand. Um, and the most, probably the best case of that would be in a, a guard, a hanging guard, analogous to what's often called um, fiddle bow in many other sword and buckler systems. Um, so if I'm here and I see Jim's gonna make a huge cut to my up, right? I might come through, I roll through and pull. This lets me cover everything here. And from this, I've now got a big power generation move, right? Um, I'm going to use the Pell for just a second, right? So if I'm here and I can make a decent cut, right, versus this roll through, pulls a much bigger cut. Um, so if I'm if I'm playing the same thing, and Jim makes you know a big cut from my head, and I have time. I'll come out under cover and make my strike with that roll around for power generation. Now, obviously, I'm not going to brain Jim. I like him too much, and I value his feedback um, and getting to fight with him. I don't want to break him. Um, so that's how I want to do it. So what happens if Jim, not being an idiot, goes, oh, I'm going to cover that, right? So... You know, we're here, Jim goes to make a big cut, I cover, and he's here, right? 
well, where do I go from here? Right? I can play this, right, and come back. Well, that's slow, right? Or, right, we're here, right, and I come through, boom, right, and I come through, and I'm going to cross and make a plunging thrust. Yeah. Um, we, we actually see this better and more effectively off the other side, um, but we can do it off of either. Right? Again, if we were to come from the other side, you're going to come in from your left, right? We get a big backhand, and I've come here like this, right? And I've covered, and I cut, and he comes around, and I'm going to come right over the top. So we actually will practice these as sequences often. Um, I'm going to just demo on the palette for a second, Jim. Um, right? If I set up here, I'll provoke, roll around, right? Big motions initially, and then shorten it. So I come in and provoke, right? So, and again, come in, provoke with what looks like a cut, roll back through, and come back under cover of my buckler. Little things, right? They, they seem like small, simple actions until you start to put them together. And that's kind of a hallmark of what we see in the KevSur system. Little things that look like simple actions that build up in a almost chaotic way until you get things you don't know what you're seeing into your head. And that's part of the goal. Um, so let's see, we've covered basic cuts. We've covered the hangers. Yeah, we need to cover the profile guards um, before we get into anything more complex in sequence. So the guards we've shown, right? We've shown joined guards in many variants. You've seen you know, this for thrusting. We've played with the roll through on the two sides. Um, but what we haven't shown is these two lovely guards, um, the high and low variants, where I go from being squared up like this to profile. Um, and in a lot of the writing, LS really refers to these as the war stances, the high and low versions. They're almost never used in friendly fencing. They're only used in the, your ancestors have been stealing my sheep and cattle for generations kind of fencing. Um, and these we're told make tremendous blows. Um, and from here, I'll, I'll go on the pal to start, right? Um, but from here, if I do this, like, and just reach, there's, I'm not getting a lot, right? Just pulling with my body. So these blows come with a passing step and a joining of the hands, right? So I come in and I, my hands are back, and I can follow up with a join strike very easily. Um, for the low variant, this traditionally is used to make large rising cuts, right? So if I go towards the camera, I start low and strike with a rising action. The shape of the sword, the single edge nature of it, um, affects the blow and how we make it. If I were to put my Kamali down and pick up something like the Satavari with the same flow, I may or may not come true edge. I don't have to, right? From here, I can literally cast that false edge and hook it around. Less common weapon, more of a backup. Um, the main weapon. So the, the style is informed by true edge blows coming from different places. So, you know, if Jim and I are playing and I really don't like him, right, and we're here, I might open coming crashing through with this. Now he's covered, right? But from here, I can literally just finish or make another play, right? And we can expound on options endlessly, right? You know, where do we go? What's our parry repose? What's our... Um, if I were to share a couple of our core drills for developing the base strikes and dexterity with the sword and buckler, um, I think that might be a good place to go next. Yes. Please. Does that go work ahead. for you? 
Yes, please. Okay, wonderful. So the, the next piece is, um, we'll go with the easy one first. So let's actually set the bucklers aside for a moment because there is, we have to be able to fight if we lose our buckler, right? If you just have your sword. Um, and I'm going to start with a, the same three cut system. I believe um, Russ mentioned this in uh, your interview with him when he touched on the Georgian stuff he does. Yeah. Um, but we have the pair of us and we'll begin. And this is a beautiful introduction to cross cutting as a, a thing. We'll begin off of our left shoulder, cutting through. So let's still the base drill, right? So it's through, roll through, descending from the right, right? Then rising from the left. Rising from the left. Yeah, now it's been a while. So descending from the left. Yep. Roll through. Roll through. Descending from the right. Rising from the left. Descending from the left. Roll through. This way. Yep. Descending from the right. Rising from the left. Like base system. <laughs> Hold on, I haven't done this in a long time. Hold on. We bit rusty there, Jim. Yeah. One, roll through. Two, three. Yep. Um, just that flow, yeah. and then we can put right five steps with this okay. rising. Coming up. <laughs> That's okay. The next yeah. one we do of these will be simpler for you. <laughs> it's more your core. Right. right. So again, <laughs> left, pass through, <laughs> right, rising from the left. And then back to descending from the left. From the left, roll through, descending from the right, rising from the left, right? And this whole sequence just becomes a back and forth and a flow. So wherever this is the sequence, right, wherever it gets broken contains the answer to the next piece. Um, I'm not going to go into the endless possibilities of that so much as Right. What is this drill? Why do we do this? Well, for fighting without a buckler, those are your three core strikes. You defend yourself against pretty much anything. So Jim is a very accomplished subur. He'll throw all sorts of different stuff at me. So pick something, right? I can cover that cut from there. I can cover that cut from there. That cut from there. That cut from there. Right? These are... Don't adjust for me. I'm covering All right. Right. Or if I play from the rising cuts and he comes in with something, right? Right, and I'm, I'm literally just defending right now. Ah, I missed that one. Right, but again, these are all. I can defend. These three strikes give me the possibility to defend and offend all at once. And in sequence, they become really powerful. So if I start here, right, yeah. and we've got this, and I come to here. And I can play with my sequence and repeat. When we bring the buckler back into it, it gets interesting. Change the tempo too. Yep. The next drill, we'll start with sword alone and then add the buckler in, which is our hanging parry drill. This helps drill the actions to generate these big power strikes. So this is really straightforward. Right, Jim will pick a side and, and strike. I'll come here. Right. All we're doing is training fluidity. Right. So now we take that same thing and put the buckler back in it, and the parries look a little different, right? In a sense. So if Jim picks a side to strike here, and I'll, I was going to. I'm coming. Yeah, stay the same half, right? So I'm here, and I'm going to cut back to that. Right? And we can fall into this rhythm. And the other piece of this is the fluidity. Right? From here, we can add ups and downs. Um, are your legs up to this? Are you up? Legs are fine. Okay. So the other piece of this that we can play as a sequence, and I'll attack and Jim will just defend for this, um, is going to be something akin to this. I'll do the easy one first. Right? So I'm going to come here and I cut to this, not just a, a normal parry. Right? So I come in and cut, and now I'm going to return 
by a drop, right? So I cut, I rise and cut from below, right? And as he covers that, I'll immediately pop back up to the same thing standing. The easy side is descending from my left, rising from my right. The hard side is descending from my right, rising from my left, because that necessitates the single key buckler transition in the system. Um, to go from here to here to launch my strikes, my buckler and my hand are in the way. Now, we can solve this different ways, right? If I come and roll through here for the power generation, yeah. right, I solve this problem in essence by putting, you know, my sword in front. That's not ideal if we're fencing with these light choppy, right? If Jim and I are fencing these light choppy blows and I, and I have to come like through, like I'm never gonna get there before he sticks me. So instead what I do is, right, I've made my cut and then my buckler shifts around my sword. The pari shifts around the kamali. Um, so if I come in close, I, I've cut and then this opens and comes back. So Can you that, show it again, Mike? Can you show it again, please? Can you sure, do it um, again? From the front or from the side? Uh, from the front, please. Okay, so I've made my strike, yeah. and then I'm going to roll. Mm -hmm. My buckler comes over my hand mm -hmm. to allow me to return here. Okay. And the same thing going the other way. Boom, boom. Mike, can you show it once uh, from the side as well, please? Thank you. So I'm here. Mm -hmm. Am I in view well here? Yes, it's perfect. Perfect. Excellent. So if I'm in view here, this mm -hmm. comes back and this mm -hmm. transition is over. Ah. Mm -hmm. The advantage to a buckler that's strapped with straps, mm -hmm. right? And I know you guys use this in Razmoth Zar as well, this strapping arrangement, yes. right? And it allows the buckler hand to grasp things to move differently. But in the case of the Kevser system, where we need to move these tightly, I can create a lot of movement simply by opening my hand and closing it again. Right from the side, this action is a simple twist of the wrist and opening of the fingers. Right, and with the buckler stuck, like it's not coming off my hand. I can just leave it like this, right? So I'm secure. And if we think about where a blow is coming from, right? If I'm here, right, and I now need to change over, where is Jim set up for a blow? It's gonna come down where he was, right? So in that transition period, right, I'm here and I'm transitioning, my hand is covered from above, which is the most likely place to be struck from. So as a change comes, it's relatively secure. I mean, obviously nothing is 100%. Right, but from here, I've made this strike. And it becomes this quick, right? And we can do it with the drop, without the drop, we're here. I strike the cover, right? And from here, if I want to strike again, I'm probably gonna come back over the top and force him to make a large cover. Um, we can also do this starting from the below, right? So, and just standing works. Um, something akin to the Metasio Gladii from 133, right? One of our oldest sword and buckler sources. In that system, right, you see one player start and a try and be 133 for a second, right? You see a starting position that looks like this, right? And I do, against you cutting to long point, right? I tread through, this is my goal with a strike, right? And then you, you counterbind against me, right? now. so counterbind with a sword. You're gonna, Right, and so I flow with it, boom, right, the 133 variant. Georgian, we'll do the same thing. The starting position looks a little different, right? If I'm here, now you'd be wherever you want, be up in alpha, right? If you're out here, just start it. And I might go and intercept to take this, you push me aside, I'll come back to the other side with that same transition, right? So this transition is really critical. Um, and fortunately, it's really easy to practice on your own. Um, one of my COVID isolation entertainments 
was hours upon hours of doing this. Right? And playing with.